Hi everyone, it's Katrina. Number 10. The Baalbek Stones Baalbek is an ancient Phoenician city located in what is today Lebanon, just north of Beirut. It was inhabited as far back as 9000 BC and grew to be one of the major pilgrimage sites in the ancient world. But of course, these weren't Buddhist or Islamic pilgrims. They were worshipping a different god. People came from all over the land to give praise to the sky god Baal. The city's name actually translates to Lord Baal of the Beka Valley. In the very center of the great city was an enormous temple dedicated to Baal and his consort Astarte. Even all these years later, the ruins of the temple are still there. But here's the mystery that scientists have never been able to solve. The city of Baalbek was built using giant stones. The foundation cornerstones weigh about 100 tons each. The retaining wall was built of even bigger monolithic stones, weighing over 300 tons. Nobody has any clue how the ancient people of Phoenicia managed to move the stones, or how they could even transport them to the city. One of the blocks was discovered a mile away, weighing 900 tons. When the Romans arrived about 2,000 years ago, they used the original stones as foundations for their own buildings and temples. Even they couldn't figure out how the Phoenicians had manipulated the building blocks. Some say they could have only been moved using something like a spaceship or a great piece of modern machinery. And even after decades of study, scientists are still confused. Number 9. The Nazca Landing Strips The Nazca Lines in Peru have been a mystery to archaeologists ever since they were discovered in the middle of the desert in the 1920s. The Nazca Lines are a group of geoglyphs drawn on the ground to create the huge shapes of animals and things that look like monsters. They can be found about 250 miles south of Lima and were created by the Nazca culture 2,000 years ago. What's truly unusual about this historical art is that the images can only be seen from above. This has led to a lot of speculation as to why and how they were built. If the locals couldn't even see them without hovering in the air above, what was the point? In total, there are over 300 designs covering the desert, including representations of at least 70 animals and plants. Some of them measure a whopping 1,200 feet long. There is also one particularly strange geoglyph that appears to show a human figure dressed like an astronaut. We know the lines were created beginning in the year 100 BC. Each geoglyph was made by removing about 15 inches of rock to reveal the lightly colored sand beneath. The geoglyphs started out small and got bigger as the Nazca learned what they were doing. In the early 1940s, American historian Paul Kosuk studied the lines and determined they had some connection to astrology. After that, the German archaeologist Maria Reich suggested the animal geoglyphs were meant to represent groups of stars in the sky. As we moved into the 60s and 70s, researchers began to suggest they were made as markers for alien visitors. These theories are pretty wild, saying that aliens helped build the lines as part of a great landing strip for their huge space vehicles. But of course, that's probably not the case. Right now, the best guess scientists have is that the lions were made for some unknown ritual astrological purpose. Number 8. Glastonbury Tor Some historians believe Glastonbury Tor is the burial site for the mythical King Arthur. Obviously, there's a lot of skepticism surrounding this theory. Nobody knows if King Arthur was a real person, and his burial site has never actually been found here. Glastonbury Tor is a hill in England topped by St. Michael's Tower, which was built in the 14th century. It's a famous landmark in Somerset, thought of as one of England's most spiritual sites. Excavations have revealed habitation going back to the days of the Neolithic people. Archaeologists have found flint tools, Roman artifacts, and other relics spanning a period of over 5,000 years. They even found proof that an original church was built in 1275, but destroyed probably by an earthquake, before the more recent Church of St. Michael was constructed over its ruins. Ever since the 12th century, Glastonbury Tor and the legend of King Arthur have gone hand in hand. In 1191, King Arthur's and Queen Guinevere's coffins were allegedly discovered here and then lost. But historians don't believe it. They think it was just a hoax to increase the area's popularity. The truth is that we don't know just how important this area was 800 years ago. If King Arthur was real, perhaps he was buried here. However, no tomb of any sort has ever been discovered. Number 7. Secret Underground Tunnels of Mesopotamia Ani is a mysterious Armenian city whose origin dates back 5,000 years. During the days of Mesopotamia, 
Ani was renowned for being a city of great splendor and magnificence. It was called the City of 40 Gates and the City of 1001 Churches. It was also said to rival cities like Constantinople and Cairo. In the 11th century, Ani had a population of roughly 100,000 people. In the years that followed, it became a battleground for the warring empires of Europe and was ultimately abandoned and destroyed. Today, the ruins of Christian churches, temples used by Zoroastrians, and crumbled structures archaeologists can't even identify litter the hilltop city. And here's something interesting. In the 1880s, an underground portion of the city was discovered. Archaeologists found a tunnel which led to a labyrinth of corridors, cells, and massive rooms seemingly without purpose. A text was discovered in one of the rooms written in an ancient Armenian language, proving the underground city was very old. Today, we know of at least 823 subterranean structures underneath the ruins of Ani. These structures include stables, monasteries, tombs, and dwellings. And yet nobody has been able to figure out why such a great and prosperous city had a secret underground portion. It's a mystery thousands of years old that will probably never be solved. Number 6. Band of Holes In Peru, archaeologists discovered a strip of land about a mile long covered in mysterious holes. The holes are shallow, almost like unused graves. Experts have been researching these holes for decades, with little to no success. This strange site is called simply Band of Holes. The holes were first discovered in 1931 when pilots started flying over the area. Nearly a century later, we're not much closer to finding out their origin. What we do know is that the holes were dug about 500 years ago in the 15th century. Each one is 3 feet wide and less than 4 feet deep. They also weren't carved out of the ground exactly, but were constructed using soil and rocks brought in from somewhere else. Looking at it from the outside, it doesn't make too much sense. In total, there are over 5,000 of them. Here are the most entertaining theories. Some say aliens, with the holes being left by some kind of propulsion system when they took off from the ground. But a more grounded theory is that the holes were part of an ancient Inca tax system. Archaeologists Charles Stanish and Henry Tantalian from the University of California say the pits were used as measuring devices for redistributing food. People would have had to bring their food and dump it into these holes, and then it was redistributed to people in the kingdom like some kind of early communist program. What do you think these mysterious holes were used for? Let me know in the comments below. And now for number five. But first, want to give a big shout out to Oliver F. Rupert and Lily Lipstick. Thanks so much for your support and for spending time with us. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe to join the Origins Explained family. Number 5. Ancient Abu Dhabi In Abu Dhabi, archaeologists with the Department of Culture and Tourism recently discovered the earliest known building anywhere in the United Arab Emirates. The building has been dated to 8,500 years old. This makes it 500 years older than anything else ever found here. The ruin was uncovered on Gaga Island. Almost 10,000 years ago, this place wouldn't have been the inhospitable desert it is today. It would have been a fertile coastline, one so enticing the Neolithic hunters settled down and built some of the very first human settlements. Before the discovery of this ruin, the oldest structure in the UAE was on the island of Marawa. Looking at both of these discoveries, it's pretty clear that the islands near Abu Dhabi were a gathering point for early humans. But that's about as much as we know about the ancient people who lived here. The ruin is nothing more than a few crumbling walls. Nobody knows who made it, how long the community on the island lasted, or where they went after. Number 4. Rocky Gari At the beginning of the 20th century, there weren't really any archaeological records of what happened in India between the Stone Age and the Dark Age. But then came the discovery of the Harappan culture, pushing back civilization in India over 2,000 years. We now know about the cities of Dolavira, Mohenjo-daro, and Rakigari. These were the major hubs for the Bronze Age Harappan, giant cities surrounded by agricultural settlements and filled with skilled craftsmen. In total, archaeologists have identified at least 2,000 sites related to the civilization. Mohenjo-daro was considered the biggest at over 300 hectares until the year 2020. That was when 11 mysterious mounds were found in Rocky Gari, spanning an area of at least 550 hectares. This site appears to be the biggest, but it's only been 5% excavated. Nobody has any idea what its significance was, why there's barely anything left except a handful of buried ruins, 
or how it fits in with India's ancient history. That being said, it's not that surprising that archaeologists are confused. The Harappan civilization is believed to have existed for only 1300 years. They appeared in 3300 BC and disappeared into thin air in 2000 BC. Almost everything they built has already deteriorated and been lost to time. Number 3. The Cremated Remains of the Buddha In a small Chinese village, archaeologists discovered the cremated remains of someone in the ruins of a temple. The remains were found inside a ceramic box with a very mysterious inscription on it. The inscription says that the ashes in the box belong to Buddha himself, Siddhartha Gautama. They were gathered by monks of the Lotus School from the Longxing Monastery. Over 2,000 cremated fragments of the Buddha were collected, along with his bones and teeth, and buried in the hall of the temple on June 22, 1013. Along with the box, archaeologists also found over 260 Buddhist statues. All of these artifacts were hidden underneath the ruins of what is believed to be Manjusri Temple. Here's where science and history get a little complicated. The Buddha was a very real person who died 2,500 years ago. But according to reputable sources, this wasn't the only discovery ever made of some human remains alleged to belong to the Buddha. A skull bone was discovered inside a gold chest in China a few years ago, also from the Buddha. It happens all the time. This case is a little different because the remains are cremated. They were also gathered over a period of 20 years by a pair of monks named Yun Chiang and Shi Ming. We know that Buddha was cremated at Kushinagar, but what happened to those ashes afterwards is a total mystery. They could be in the box, or they could be somewhere else. Number 2. Germany's Ring Sanctuary There are unexplained mass graves located at what some have called the Stonehenge of Germany. It's located in Pomelte and has been found to contain evidence of ritual human sacrifice. The site itself is a ring-shaped sanctuary composed of circular ditches, earth walls, and tall wooden pillars. It was built about 4,000 years ago in the Early Bronze Age and had most likely been used for astronomy, the same as Stonehenge in England. Things probably weren't exactly the same, but the rituals were undoubtedly quite similar. But here's where the two sites are very different. At the Ring Sanctuary in Germany, archaeologists have identified the remains of over 35 longhouses in which the ancient people once lived. But at Stonehenge, researchers have never actually found tangible proof of houses. That means that people were living right here along the outskirts of the sanctuary. Plus, pits of bodies were discovered in the German sanctuary site. It's unclear if the people found in the pits were victims of sacrifice, but archaeologist Andre Spatzier thinks so. The thing is that no adult male bodies have ever been found in the burial pits. The only bodies have been those of women and children. As sad as it is, these were normally the people to be sacrificed by Neolithic people to their gods. What's unknown is why the people died, and if they were sacrificed, what the point was. This was supposedly a place of astrology. It makes you wonder if our ancient ancestors weren't sacrificing people to the stars in the sky. Number 1. The Truth of the Crystal Skulls there's nothing quite as supernatural in the field of archaeology as a crystal skull. For that matter, no other archaeological artifacts are quite as controversial. Throughout the world, there are dozens of very rare crystal skulls stored in public collections and stashed away in private ones. Some of them are crystal clear, some of them are smoky colored, and they all come in different shapes and sizes. Most are believed to have come from Mexico or Central America many hundreds of years ago. But what's the truth behind the crystal skulls? Were they really carved by an unknown civilization that predates the Maya and the Aztec? Are they proof of extraterrestrial visitors before the Spanish ever arrived in the Americas? The answer depends on who you ask. Joshua Shapiro, one of the authors of Mysteries of the Crystal Skulls Revealed, says these skulls are ancient computers created by aliens that are able to record energy. If unlocked, the skulls can replay events and images based on who has come into contact with them. Archaeologists say that this is nonsense. Michael Smith from Arizona State University says these skulls were simply pieces of art made by the Aztec. In the Aztec pantheon of gods, many were represented by skulls. To invoke the power of these gods, they simply carved skulls out of whatever aesthetically appealing and impressive materials they could find. But here's the most shocking truth of all. According to the British Museum and the Smithsonian Institution, there are no crystal skulls. 
The British Museum did a study and found that all of the crystal skulls they could get a hold of stored in museums were carved as recently as the late 19th century. There has never been a crystal skull found, officially, at any archaeological excavation. What's your take on the mystery of the crystal skulls? Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time! Bye!